first I was a hippie, then I was a flower child, and then I was a freak. My name is Doug, I'm also from Canada. I'm on this tour because I'm a big fan of yours and I love your book. My name's Molly and I moved to Laurel Canyon in 2009. was kicked out of every hotel he ever stayed in in LA. My name is Linda, I'm from Finland huh? and I'm a big fan of your books, I've actually read three of them. I'm Sam, um, we're here from Seattle, mm. I play bass so I'm into tons of different styles of music and uh, lots of rock history and it's really a pleasure to meet you. And I am Gator, I'm also from Seattle, um, we're together. Um, big fan of uh, The Doors, Led Zeppelin, kind of grew up on all of them. Uh -huh. And I'm Kip. Kip, I'm your, Kip. Hmm. I'm your jolly driver. <laughs> <laughs> what a field day for the heat, a thousand people in the street. What a sight it was. Traffic backed up for miles, horns blurring, high beams extending into headlight heaven. Pandora's box sat right here. The ultimate rock club of the moment was being torn down to make way for a wider road and a three-way turn signal. We, the patrons of the Purple Palace, were not gonna stand for it. It's dozen precarious steps. In Laurel Canyon, that meant right next door. I threw on a little purple dress and started down the steps to make the acquaintance of the ultra-hip neighbor who had a pre-released copy of The Doors' first album. Jim Morrison, in the flesh, wearing nothing but his black leather pants, was digging around in the fridge, humming along with the end. You know, you're a groupie and then super groupie if you get to go on the road. So Noel Redding had already taken me with the Hendrix experience on the road. So I was already a super groupie, but then I was about to become a double super groupie. <laughs> and sometimes uh, Robert would come visit us because Jimmy would stay with me there. He left this demo behind and all of his handwritten notes and everything. And I wish I still had that, but I sold it for $50 when I was broke. An acetate. An acetate of Led Zeppelin II in a different order. <laughs>
people ask me all the time what's been my favorite live show and they expect me to say Zeppelin or the Stones or the Who or you know and it's always the Flying Burrito Brothers oh, wow. because Graham was the most passionate singer emotional feeling person I've ever seen before and he wept through oh. the entire song and no one no one seemed to be noticing and I'm just like oh, look at this people are you missing this you know I didn't even know Marty Stewart and he brought me one of Graham's nudie shirts. Somehow it's hanging together after all these years. I gave it to him in 1969. Wow. So he said my books taught him more about Graham than he'd ever imagined. And so he gave this to me. Wow. He came over to my house and gave it to me. Oh, look at that GP on it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Nice. Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful. Graham and Keith Richards got very close. And much to mix and Chris Hillman's mortification because they they started turning into each other. <laughs> All of a sudden Graham, this, this country boy from Georgia, was wearing eye makeup. Mm. And it was Hillman was just horrified. Bye! Hi, it's so Bye. great to meet you. That was such a fun to tour. Meet you too. That was easily the best tour I've ever uh, been on for kind of rock music history and things like that. So um, very, very cool stories. Bye. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Doug. Bye. Bye. Pamela's tour was fantastic. She tells so many different stories that you can't find anywhere else. So it's wonderful hearing it firsthand from her and seeing the places she's talking about. What a pleasure, what a pleasure. Thank you for everything. I really admire Miss Pamela and I was so, so happy to come and see her and meet her and it was a really intimate tour and really wonderful and the best tour I've ever been in and I just love her and love Elaine and I recommend this tour really to everybody. I'm in love with me.